All right, so this is just my process for rigging sluggos. This here is what I would consider a classic McKenna rigged sluggo, meaning it has a stinger hook in the rear and a single head hook connected with a length of Dacron. It's a process that's been brought to the surf casting audience uh, quite a while ago by Steve McKenna. Um, but it's very similar to what uh, decades of surf casters have been doing with rig deals, um, running two hooks and connecting them. Uh, to kind of achieve that action um, while also having that ability to uh, kind of increase your uh, op options when it comes to hooking up with fish. It's a pretty uh, simple process and it can be done with a number of different baits, not just sluggos. I have a uh, GT Gravity Tackle Eel here, a Hoagie, essentially any long skinny profiled uh, soft plastic bait can be rigged in this way. You might just have to modify um, a little bit depending on how thin the profile is, if the bait has kind of a hook slot molded into it. Uh, but it's an effective option that you can use with a number of different baits. You don't need a whole lot to uh, actually rig sluggos. You'll need a rigging needle. Uh, now there's a bunch of commercially available ones uh, designed for offshore, but this here works for me. This is just a length of clothes hanger wire i flattened one end and punched a small hole in it. Onto the other end, I have sharpened it on a bench grinder. And this works really well, just this kind of DIY needle design. Um, I use this for all my soft plastic baits. I also use it for rigging eels. You'll want scissors, lighter. If you choose to weight your baits, some form of nail weight, Lunker City, same company that produces sluggos makes some of those. And then you'll want quality hooks. I like to use a, two different styles of hook. I like to use a live bait hook in the rear because it has a small eye profile that won't bulge or kind of distort the bait when it's pulled into the body. And I like to use a side wash in the head because we have this big cutting edge, a big barb, and a big eye that I can easily tie off of or clip a tactical angler's clip onto in the dark. Um, that in particular is a 6 aught uh, VMC Siwash hook. The live bait hooks are Gamagatsu 8 aught live baits. I connect those hooks with a length of Dacron. I use 50 pound test when rigging soft plastics. If I was going to be rigging uh, larger baits like rig deals, uh, big eels, I'll use 80 pound test Dacron, but I don't find it necessary and I don't want to impede the action with uh, something like a Sluggo or a GT. And I like to use Zappa Gap, it helps to keep everything together, secure the knots and secure the hook in place. The process itself is pretty straightforward. Take about 24 inches of Dacron, doubled over, and I take the end and join them where that double forms, where it's split. And I'm simply gonna tie my stinger hook, my live bait hook, onto that. Pass both of those through, and I'm just going to do something along the lines of a simple fisherman's knot. And make sure everything lays tight and snugs down well. That's the most important thing is you just want a good, tight, clean connection. Wet it up a little. You should be doing that with any of your knots, regardless of if it's braid, mono, Dacron. Um, just helps everything lay nice and tight. And then I'm just going to snip those tags. And I like to burn them a little bit. I take a little zappa gap to finish that connection. I want just a little dab kind of where that knot meets the hook. We'll lay that there for now. Now, I'll be rigging on a classic 
9 inch Lunker City Sluggo. This is a pretty effective color I've found, especially in the spring when the squid are around. Uh, hot pink, I think they call this bubblegum. <clears throat> so I have my length of Dacron. I'm going to take those two ends, just burn one of those real quick and kind of flatten it out. That's just so I can pass it through the eye of my rigging needle. And then I'm going to put those two lengths together. Just do a quick and dirty overhand knot in that. Make sure it's tight. You don't want to have to restart your rigging. And I don't want too much of a tag when I'm pulling it through the bait. So I can slide that Dacron, that knot, up. And now we have that Dacron connected to my live bait hook. I'm going to take my Sluggo and lay it with the flat, what I would call the top of the Sluggo, face down the table. Insert my rigging needle about three quarters of an inch to a half inch behind the joint in the Sluggo. I always want my hook face coming out of what I would call the bottom, kind of the tapered side. And I want to run that directly up the body of the bait. I don't want to come out the top. I don't want to come up the side, come out the sides. Just work it down slowly and be careful you don't punch that needle through and get yourself. And now when I come out, I don't want to come out directly in the center of the head. I want to be just a little bit offset. That looks pretty much perfect right there. I'm just going to slide that needle and that bait all the way down. Make sure your line is laying nice and tight. That knot is right at the eye of the needle. And pull it directly inside the body. Pull it a little ways through. I don't want to be dealing with this needle anymore. So I'm just going to snip that off and lay that aside. And now I can work that stinger hook into the bait. Make sure that I don't have the Dacron bulging. I want it equal on each side before I pull it in. And I want to put equal pressure on it as I work it in. Just pull that hook eye right inside the bait. Might have to work it up a little bit. But that's sitting just about perfect. Now I have it so that it's right at this joint. If a big fish bites it, it's going to still compress quite a bit and I'll be able to get a good solid hookup. Now I want to tie in my side wash. This is an open eye side wash. I buy open eyes so I can use them for rigging plugs and such as well. I just pinch it closed. Um, make sure it's a good closed connection. And I'm going to run that in the head making sure to stay away from that offset Dacron. Sometimes you might catch that Dacron, but if you've done it right, usually you'll have a good clean shot through. And I just quickly test fit it for where it's going to sit. I'm happy with that right there. So now I'm gonna back it right back up to essentially where the barb would lay. Now I'm gonna take both of my lines and I'm just going to do what essentially amounts to an overhand knot into that with both of them. Pull it tight. Pull each of them individually to get that kind of opposing force locking it down. Do that a second time. You want it all to lay nice and flat. I 
And now I'm going to just start tying up the length of that hook with an over under approach. Essentially, I'm just making overhand knots individually. I make an, uh, an overhand knot. It's now currently laying on top of the hook shank as it's orientated to me. I'm going to slide it under and pull it tight. Now I'm going to have it, that knot is laying underneath the hook. I'm going to bring the two tag ends up above the hook, make an overhand knot, that rolled on me, make an overhand knot and pull it tight. It's a little bit of a time consuming process. If I have too much of a tag, it just becomes a mess when I'm trying to tie. So I just want like eight to 10 inches to work with here um, when I'm at this stage of the game. And I can either just roll my Dacron under the hook or I can kind of roll my bait to quickly tie up and down. Continuing, I'm under, now over. Now I'm flipping it so I'm essentially doing over, now under. And it just lets me kind of begin to build this path of interlocking knots down on each other. They all press down. Uh, it, it's a very secure method actually. Um, now everyone has a little bit of a different way of tying off. Some people tie off directly to the eye. I don't like to do that because it exposes the Dacron and it can become uh, frayed or wear out over time if you have a clip or it's bumping into rocks or what have you. Um, so I like to do this because it's all covered by the hook shank um, and it will be completely uh, kind of encapsulated within that bait so I don't have to worry about anything becoming damaged with these. Uh, I, I've taken sluggos apart that have just become too worn out after fishing them for a bunch of tides and uh, getting this Dacron off of a hook if I want to reuse that hook is a process because it locks down so tightly. Um, in other words, it's just a very effective method that I've found for tying these on. I'm sure everyone has their own process for it. Now, I like to do this where I'm tying in this second hook. Some people might just rig with a single head hook. Um, some would use a something like a swim bait hook or a, a weighted swim bait hook. Everyone has their own little way of rigging and uh, they, they all work. This is what I like because I like to have that stinger. Um, I've taken quite a few fish and even very good fish. There's a common myth that the big fish only eat from the head. And I think generally that's true. Big bass do like to take their bait head first. But I've taken enough on that tail hook and only on that tail hook uh, that I'm convinced that it's worth having. Now when I have something between an eighth and a quarter inch left between that hook eye and my stack of knots, I'm going to start to do a couple of double ups. So I just did one over under and now I'm going to do another that's right on top of that to kind of lock it in place. And now I'm going to flip that. So I do one on top and then another one to lock it in place. And I've found doing that four times, two on each side, seems to be uh, kind of more than adequate for what I'm working with. And this whole process ensures that I have two completely individual lengths of Dacron connecting that rear hook. 250 pound test lengths. So it's a, it's a very secure process. So now where I'm at this point in the rigging, I'm about ready to finish this sluggo off. I'm going to trim up my excess and to stop anything from fraying and to make it nice and clean when I insert it, I like to just burn that length down Flatten it out. And now, some people would 
just try to glue it and push it in place. Some don't even use glue. What I find works best is to do a test run first because now I've added a bit of kind of girth to this hook shank with my Dacron stack. So I'm going to kind of work it back and forth to get that hook sitting exactly where I want it. That looks perfect to me. And one more time, I back that out just to the point where I've started tying the Dacron. And I'm going to add a thin layer of that Zappa Gap along each side. I like to kind of concentrate on where those finishing knots are. Push that back inside that bait. Clean up any excess glue if necessary. And that is what I would generally consider the completed McKenna rigged or two hook style sluggo. Um, some guys are going to want to add something like a nail weight to that body. Um, my thought process with nail weights, I'm using two large hooks and I'm fishing a lot of kind of sticky structure, uh, deeper boulder fields, or I should say shallow boulder fields where those hooks are acting as a keel and adding a little bit of weight and I don't want to add too much additional. If I'm kind of fine tuning baits for a specific uh, location, I'll add nail weights, but not too many. If I find that I'm putting in a lot of extra weight um, to work a particular stretch of water, I might opt to use something like a jig head instead. Um, it's just kind of right tool for the right job. This to me is an excellent presentation for shallow skinny water um, where I want to drift over uh, or around structure. And it's also one of the more lifelike approaches because this whole bait, I don't have long hook shanks inside of this as I would with, say, a swim bait hook or a jig head. Um, I just have a length of Dacron and two shorter hooks. So I have a ton of flexibility, a ton of movability. Um, it's just a very effective approach. And it's quick and easy. I can whip up a whole bunch of these uh, in the off season and be ready to go uh, when the stripers get back.